Hey guys, it's ya boy. Let's never do that ever again. This is that man, this is some manga related content and today we are doing another haul. That's right, it's been a hot minute since the last haul and I thought why not show more stuff off because I can. Now today's special guest is Mamako from the uh, Mom Isekai. I picked this one up, uh, it picked it up a few weeks ago and honestly she's absolutely beautiful. I just unboxed her and I was really ill at the time and pretty much all of that content was unusable. But she, still she can uh, watch us as we do an unboxing and judge us as moms do. I'm not sure if there's anything to judge on here. Mm -hmm, yeah, there's some possibly some uh, weird stuff in this uh, unboxing. First up in our conquest to unbox everything. I don't know why I keep saying unboxing. It's it's hauling. I am hauling. Hauling ass. That's how it works, isn't it? Isn't that the phrase? Over to you, Americans. First up, we have Yotsuba and Monochrome Animals. Now, this is actually for the Yotsuba video that's upcoming. It was a, a few one of the few things I was trying to pick up in get before I did the video because it's an interesting topic. This is actually a children's book. Holstein. So that is cow. Now, what I like about this is that you can kind of tell what you see, you kind of tell, you can easily tell what everything is. It's got the English words and it's got the Japanese equivalent to it. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting. And it's something that's very easy to read. It's something very easy to pass on to your children. I was, like I said, it's supposed to be for young kids. And I just thought it was a rather interesting thing that like you don't normally see in manga. So yeah, uh, this might be a whole new spin-off of me buying children's books of a uh, famous manga. Uh, probably not. Uh, it was really for the Yotsuba thing. Yeah, 2006 visual fan book. I'm going to fill that in and absolutely nothing will happen. Stone, Stone, calling Dr. Stone. Dr. Stone, Dr. Stone, let's stop that song now. Yes, this is Dr. Stone volume 9. This is towards the end of the Stone Wars. That's about as much as I can see. Dr. Stone is still the only thing out of Shonen Jump that I'm actually buying, uh, at least making an effort to buy anyway. I'm probably just going to pick up Spy Family when it uh, eventually comes out, depending on how long it's going to run for, because this is the worrying thing. I'm very, very increasingly rapidly running out of space. I'm going to have to try and sell some DVDs or something. But yeah, Dr. Stone, Volume 9, I read this pretty much straight away, and honestly, I love this series so much. There's some really nice tense situations in this one. Uh, that I really liked. Uh, it's, if you've ever read Ice Shield 21, you kind of see that the whole tense where they, they managed to do the games. There's a lot of that kind of content in here. Along with some battles and stuff like that. Yeah, it's uh, it's rather interesting. If you're not into Dr. Stone, I would definitely recommend keeping up with it for a few volumes and then tr at least giving it some time because once it gets going, it it's absolutely fantastic. Sadly, it's not doing very well, which automatically means that this is a terrible series. Yeah, gotta love that logic. Next up is combatants will be dispatched. Now, when I was unwell a few weeks ago, I was I, I was looking through stuff, and this one is a rather difficult one to acquire because they've released the manga and the light novel pretty much at the same time, and it's a slightly obscure series. So whenever I try to find, for example, the light novel, it usually comes up with the manga results, and and as we all know. All manga that has a light novel is absolutely worthless. Yeah, not really. They're just they're just rather subpar compared to the actual real thing. So yeah, I had a few issues actually just trying to locate this one. So as soon as I saw it, I bought it and I read it. And it was rather fun. It was a rather interesting little series where yeah, it's a, it's it's it's, a, it's essentially became a spin-off of Konosuba. It takes place in the same world. Uh, this is all about war. Yay! Volume 4 of Delicious and Dungeon is... I still haven't read it. I still have not read this one. So my intention now is whenever I buy a new manga is to put these on the to be read shelf. Yeah. But I am trying to re focus on reading stuff as they come in rather than leaving them on the shelf for too long. Because if you leave them on the shelf too long, you forget about them. 
which is why I've not read Pluto Volume 2 because it's been on the shelf for that long, it's kind of at the back of the shelf. And that's not a fun thing to happen. Yeah, not fun at all. But Delicious and Dungeon, I've just read Volume 3. This is uh, pretty much where I got to up to when the uh, I was reading the unofficial scans, but now I'm buying the, the, the official stuff. Um, I'm going to finish off uh, another series that I'm uh, purchasing at the moment, and now I'm going to just buy the rest of these. What I'm finding is that I'm buying these individually over the course of maybe I buy, might buy one volume a month, and then I'm kind of like, I'm never catching up with them. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that's the right way to do it. I think maybe if I'm into a series, I'm going to buy two, maybe three volumes at a time and just kind of read them in, in blocks. That's going to be the best way to do it. Remember a few weeks ago when I covered Cells at Work Code Black Volume 1? Well, I got Volume 2. Probably should have covered this one along with Volume 1. Oh well, this is still more of that excellent Cells at Work spin-off in which the body is a body that isn't being taken care of. So all of the the characters, they're, they're all struggling against the, against the world. And there's a strip club in your liver. That's right, there is a strip club in your liver. Make sure you look after the waifu. Honestly, this is, I actually I'm enjoying this one a little bit more than the original series. Um, I feel like it's I don't know I feel like it, it's hitting home a little bit more. I'm not the most healthy of people. Uh, I'm not quite as bad as the person here, fortunately. Um, but I think it's one of those series where you can always feel like you can read it and you can go, oh well, I, maybe I should take a little bit more care of myself. And um, there's another title that I'm actually reading at the moment, Bottom Tier uh, Tomozaki Kun. And yeah, that is an absolute fantastic one for that kind of thing as well. Very interesting series, definitely worth recommending. I, I don't see many people actually picking up the Cells at Work series. I don't know why, it's, it, it's a fantastic one. So if you are looking for something new to pick up, definitely check out Cells at Work and Cells at Work Code Black. Hey, it's anime titty time. Yep, we're once again going into the 3D world of Uzaki-chan wants to hang out. And, oh my god, Uzaki-chan, you were still the best girl of last year. Absolutely fun is out. I love this series so much. It's one of those ones I can I definitely see I can read, read, read many times. So easy to read and so it flows so well. Ozaki chan you is just adorable. She is just a, a fun girl and I, I really like how realistic a lot of the characters feel. It feels like a more realistic kind of way of processing uh, harem comedy. It's harem comedy and etchy comedy. Uh, there's not even that much etchy. It's it's very sweet. It's very uh, it's very cute. Um, the the etchy's kind of put, been pulled back a little bit more in this one. There's still your odd boob groups, but hey, it, it's not a romantic comedy if you don't have boob groups. P.S. Reminder, Valentine's Day is for hentai. Next up, we have Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, Kana's Daily Life, Volume 6. We are pretty much at the same level for Kana as we are for the actual main series. And you know what? I love this series so much. There's a lot of fun things with it. If you love the Kobayashi Dragon Maid um, universe, I should say, you're going to get a lot of fun out of this one. This one's got some rather interesting ones. Um, if you remember a few volumes back in Kobayashi, uh, Miss Kobayashi was turned into a man briefly. That happens to uh, Saikawa. Um, yeah, it's it's weird. It's weird, but it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. The whole series is a lot of fun. Um, the characters are really adorable. I really like the way that it's been processed. If you like Kobayashi, definitely worth checking this one out at some point. It's been a while since I've talked about Umaru-chan. I feel like, you know what it is, I feel like at one point I was talking about Umaru-chan all the time and then I kind of stopped and, you know what, this is one of my favourite series to collect. Maybe it was because it's one of the first series that I actually, when I was actually getting into collecting, it was one of the first series I started buying because I enjoyed the anime and we still don't have a release date for season two, so we are well into season two content now. And you know what, it's a lot of fun. I don't like this girl though. I really don't like it. I don't know why. It's like, I think there's only like two or three volumes left to go for Umaru-chan and they're introducing more characters into it and I'm just kind of like, oh, I don't know. I don't really like it. The, the episodes, the chapters of Umaru-chan and all the other characters, they're fine. I just don't really like the ones that focus on her. She's a bit annoying. Her special skill is that she spins around and she's slightly like Umaru and she's clingy. Um, yeah, I didn't really like that very much. I, what's going on with her legs as well? There's a like giant and then she's got tiny, tiny legs down there. 
Uh, Umaru-chan. No matter how I look at it, it's you guys' fault I'm not popular. Yeah, it's you guys' fault. It's not me, ever. Yeah, only joking. Love this series. Absolutely hilarious. Um, yeah, as I said previously in a vi another video, she's quite popular now. Which kind of makes this whole thing a little bit weird. Also, the, in Volume 16, they're going to have a, a sports tournament arc. That's right. Out of all of the series, this series is getting a sports tournament arc. I'm, I'm kind of interested in seeing how that's going to work because I hate tournament arcs. I really hate tournament arcs. There's not many series where I, I look at a tournament arc and really like it. Except Chainsaw Man, that was good. Um, it's also one of the reasons why I don't really get into many sports series, because they are just eternal tournament arcs. Except Ice Shield 21. Ice Shield 21 is still a masterpiece. No, this is another fun volume in the series. I love some of the new characters. and um, We've got uh, this new one here, who you can see at the bottom, she's basically got Dan Board face. That's right, she is Dan Board face. Honestly, there's not really much else to see. A uh, fun series. I would definitely recommend checking this one out if you haven't seen it. If you like Comey and you want something a little bit more uh, comedy and a little bit more over the top, I would definitely check this one out because, in my opinion, it's still going strong. So at the end of last month, I was reading a certain series. I got to volume 6 and I stopped because uh, volume 7 was due out any day. This one arrived like two days ago. And that is the quintessential quintuplets, volume 7. So yeah, if you like your harem kind of romance, this is the series for you. It's really adorable, it's really cute. I, I would definitely recommend it because it's an absolute fantastic series and I think it's starting to get the recognition it deserves. One of the things that annoys me a little bit though is that uh, Kodansha is on volume 7 for the physical one, yet it's on volume 11 for the digital one. And the digital one has been pretty much constantly reduced. So not only are we waiting longer for the physical one, we, I'm basically paying twice as much. Yeah, so this is one of the things that kind of annoys us. I don't mind if, we, if we've got the stuff and it's a, basically a choice between digital and physical. But at the moment, there's literally no reason if you are buying these to not go the digital route. You can have pretty much the entire series at the moment like, caught up for half the price of the physical ones. But I love this series enough that I am willing to buy it physically. Um... Yeah, it's just one of those ones. It's it's really it's really nice. I'm I'm looking forward to reading because I, I left volume six on purpose since volume seven was due out. So I've got volume six and seven to read. So I'm looking forward to seeing how things go. Also, they're all best girls, except yeah, no, they're all best girls. They're all they're all good girls. Who is your best girl? Let me know in the comments. I'm sure I've asked that question many times, but I'll always ask them ever again. Oh well, see you soon for volume 8, when that comes out in like 5 months time. So anybody who's been following my Twitter will know that there is a series that I've been going on and on and on and on and on about. I finally watched the anime of Nichijou a few days ago. And you know what? I pick up volume 2, volume 3, and volume 4. I actually enjoyed this series so much that I immediately went on to start creating a complete history of for this series. And you know what? I've been reading these. They're such easy reads. Because the, 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 it's a gag manga, you can pick them up and read them very quickly. But man, Vertical, I think Vertical is rather underrated when it comes to quality with these manga because these feel so much nicer than like these. These feel like mm, kind of cheapy, but these, oh, mmm. Ooh, that's a nice, that's a positive stroke. Ah, uh, but uh, inside the 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 quality is like it feels like a it feels like a genuine tankaban from Japan. That's what I feel like. I feel like I'm actually reading a genuine proper manga uh, for the manga uh, like actual manga quality. If you guys don't know uh, it over here, we actually do use a different type of paper as what we would use in Japan. So. 
it feels nice to have something that actually feels like the genuine article. Um, I'm not saying that these are bootlegs or anything like that, but yeah, um, Nichi Joe, hilarious series. I would definitely recommend it if you could find it because uh, from what I, it looks like, it looks like it's starting to get slightly rarer to find. Or maybe it's just me because I'm trying to get the whole thing. Uh, volume 6 at the moment, I'm having a little bit of trouble just finding Volume 6. But that might just be me. Um, if you are interested in it, it might be one that might be worth picking up sooner rather than later. Especially now that Air Vertical's owned by... Kadansha. I mean, they've been owned by Kadansha for a while, but now they're kind of everything's becoming Kadansha. So whether or not we'll see a lot of series like kind of losing this this thing, I, I hope they keep the quality up because this is a lot nicer quality than this, and I think these are. Yeah, yeah, hmm. I don't really like Kadansha's quality, and that is my haul for this month. Did you enjoy it? Did you have fun? I hope you certainly did in the comments what you have picked up over the last month and what you were reading and is there anything on here that has caught your fancy tickled your uh, fancy for example and if you did like this please leave a like please consider subscribing we're so close to that 1000 subs um nothing's gonna happen when i when i get it maybe i might do a little dance or something oh man I've now, now i have to do a dance but yeah please leave a like please consider subscribing and i will see you next time Thanks for coming and thanks again for staying. Goodbye.